that all people can be saying. No, the Book of Romans was written to who? Who was the Book of Romans written to? It was written to the Gentiles, actually. No, it was written to Israelites in Rome. That's what it was written to. And the Gentiles that could be saved are Israelites scattered like us. We're in America. The we're Gentiles. not Americans. You know we're scattered. Oh, we're Israelites, though. We're lost. We won't be down. But for the most part, yeah, but that's what's Shalom, shalom. First and foremost, want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Wahara Kodash, double honors to my apostles and elders at Great Millstone, the men that taught me this truth through the Spirit. Peace and blessings to you, brothers, that's teaching this word of truth and sincerity, and peace and blessings to the rest of the elect of the house of Israel that scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. And this is the response to the elder brother Manat Zakba dealing with this man that came up in a Christian mingle with the Israelite doctrine. And as you can see, his standpoint, all nations can be saved. Heard it all before. Heard it all before. <laughs> This is nothing new that we haven't dealt with if in the past. There's tons of lessons dealing with can all nations be saved and salvation for the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? All you got to do is type a great millstone in any of those questions and you will get a biblical response. All right. But the topic that we're hitting on today is were Israelites in Rome. Now, you have our people that come up to the camp and um, in the majority of times, they're not coming to listen or to learn. They come in to say what they know, not even to match with you. They just want you to know that they know and, you know, you ain't the only guy that knows what you know, which is the spirit of pride, <clears throat> the spirit of vainglory, you know. But the scriptures say that they're given the sacrifices of fools because they don't know that they're interrupting the message of the Most High coming out, the gospel, you know. And they don't know that they're going to be judged for giving the sacrifices of fools, as it says in Ecclesiastes 5 and 1. But at the same time, it becomes edification for our people because now we can use this scenario and dissect it, go in depth with it, research, go into the history and show our people the truth of the matter, which we're going to do today. So this is history of the Jews in the Roman Empire. Because the brother had asked him, who was the book of Romans written to? He said the Gentiles, or he said the Greeks. Not understanding who were the Greeks or who were the Gentiles. They don't even understand those terminologies and what it goes back to. And then you can ask our people, well, are you a Greek? Do you descend from the people of Greeks? And what is a Gentile? Do you descend from those people? Because the message and the truth of the matter is, it doesn't matter the land mass that you live in, the continent, the country that you're dwelling in. It matters about your gene genealogy, who your forefathers are. And then on top of that, it matters whether the spirit, which is the words of the most high, resonate with your spirit. So let's read the history of the Jews in the Roman Empire. The history of the Jews in the Roman Empire traces the interactions 
of Jews and Romans during the period of the Roman Empire, 27 BCE to 476 CE. Their cultures began to overlap in the centuries just before the Christian era. Jews, as a part of the Jewish diaspora, migrated to Rome and Roman Europe from the land of Israel, Asia Minor, Babylon, and Alexandria in response to economic hardship and insistent warfare over the land of Israel between Ptolemaic and Seleucid empires. All right, in Rome, Jewish communities enjoy privilege, privileges and thrive economically, becoming a significant part of the empire population, perhaps as much as 10%. So this is general knowledge. This is general knowledge that you had Jews, which Jew derived is a derogatory term. It was a term that I believe the Assyrians, the Assyrians or the Babylonians used to call us because they did not want to call us by our Pacific tribes. So they just labeled us Jew. Jew stems from the word or the name Judah, the man Judah. Which Judah is one of, is the son of Jacob, which is one of the twelve tribes of the nation of Israel. So Jew summed up Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, one of the three sons. I mean, the three sons of Jacob, which is name later became Israel. So now we read here. The Jewish diaspora. Now, if we ask our people, what is the Jewish diaspora? What is that? They would not be able to tell you. Even certain scholars wouldn't even know what the Jewish diaspora it is. The Jewish diaspora is when we got ex extracted out of the land of Israel. And that goes back to biblical prophecy of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Now, we're going to get a couple of scriptures, and, and we're going to wrap it up there, man. First, let's get the curses. Deuteronomy 28, verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. This is a message to the Israelites. When you read early up on the chapter, verse 15, these curses are going to come upon you because you disobeyed the Most High. That's one thing people, some people know. All right? The Most High disobeyed. It, uh, Israel disobeyed the Most High. And one of their punishments was they was going to let the Gentiles in, right? Allegedly, right? So it says, and the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. So why did the Israelites start to call themselves other nations? Why did the Israelites start to worship other gods? Because of the curses that we're reading. And it's that plain and simple. So when you read the book of Corinthians, Romans, Thessalonians, Hebrews, Philippians, Galatians, 
and you read about the churches of Asia Minor, you're not reading about other nations. You're reading the epistles written, the message written to the Israelites. Who the message was to since the beginning of the book. From Genesis to Revelation, the message always been to Israel. In regards to mercy, salvation, This is the book of Acts, chapter 18, verse 1. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth and found certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews depart from Rome. So hold on. Are you telling me that Jews lived in Rome? Israelites lived in Rome? So you, when you read Romans the 11th chapter, when you read any chapter in Romans in regards to Israelites or Gentiles or Greeks or strangers and in regards to the mercy of the Most High, in regards to repentance, this is talking about Israelites that lived in those lands. All right, let's get a little more. All right, now we're back. This is part of the article, The Diaspora. Ask any Christian or anybody that comes up, what does the word diaspora mean? They won't be able to tell you. All right? The word diaspora means scattering. Who was the scattered people? We showed you in Deuteronomy 28, verse 64, what was going to happen to the people of the Most High, which are the Israelites, if they disobeyed the Most High? Read it on. Many of the Judean Jews were sold into slavery, while others became citizens of other parts of Roman Empire. Hold on, so you're saying Jews were citizens in Rome, such as Paul? The book of Acts in the New Testament, as well as other Pauline texts, made frequent references to the large population of Hellenized Jews, Greek-speaking Jews or Jews that kept Greek as their traditions or culture. But their nationality, their forefathers, go back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In the cities of the Roman world, these Greek-speaking Jews or greek custom Jews were only affected by the diaspora in a spiritual sense, absorbing the feeling of loss and homelessness, which became <clears throat> a cornerstone of Jewish faith, much supported by persecutions in various parts of the world. The policy towards Apostolization and conversion to Judaism, which spread the Jewish religion throughout Hellenistic civilization, seems to have ended when the wars against the Romans and the following reconstruction of Jewish values for the post temple era of critical importance to the reshaping of Jewish tradition from the temple based religion to the traditions of the diaspora was the development of the interpretations of the Torah found in the Mishan in the Talmud, which is bullshit, all right? So, because the Israelites ain't supposed to be following 
no damn Talmud. The Lord, the Heavenly Father and the Son gave us the Lord's statutes and commandments and the faith of the Messiah, who the world eagerly calls Jesus Christ, which is real name of the Hebrew is Yahawasha. He didn't give us no Talmud. Now, as you can see, as it says, I'm going to highlight this part right there, right here. These Hellenized Jews were only affected by the diaspora in a spiritual sense. We was disconnected from the lower statutes commandments. We was no longer, as you can say, Torah-based Israelites, just like our people today. They worship Christmas. They worship Thanksgiving. They worship birthdays. They worship Easter. They worship all these um, paganistic holidays. But their nationality and their, descend their descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But they have no clue who they are. So they continue to live their life as the heathens. And that's why the Bible refers to them as the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Pretty much that's it. I'm leave the link in the description so brothers can follow up on it. Leave your comments, do your responses. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahusha, Wahara Kakradash. Till next time I say Shalom.